everyone welcome back to my channel Wendy's Kooky Crochet Tutorial in this video I'm going to show you how to make this really cute Sally beanie it's beginner friendly and super fun to make if you like what you see please subscribe to my channel push the like button and ring the bell so you can get all the latest stuff that um, I'm doing thanks hey guys here's what you need to make the Sally nightshade inspired beanie so you're going to need my size chart and you can find that on the community page you can print it off from there um, you're going to need a four millimeter hook or whatever matches your actual um, yarn that you choose you're going to need red blue black yarn you're going to need a yarn needle um, a red puff or you're going to have to make your red puff and measuring tape. And here I'm going to make the adult medium. So I'm going to need um, my circle to be six and a half inches um, in diameter. And I'm going to need um, it to be seven and a half inches long. So I'm going to change techniques when I'm about five and a half inches. And I'll show you that, of course, when we get into the video more. So... Uh, of course, also, sorry, you're going to need your measuring tape to measure all of this. <laughs> Alright guys, first I'm going to start out with making a magic ring. If you don't know how to make one, you can watch my video um, for more details. But I'll tell you right now, just real quickly, how to make one. So, first you're going to grab your um, tail end and you're going to hold it with one hand. And you're going to wrap your yarn in around your tail end twice. And then you're going to put your hook underneath um the first wrap there so underneath that tail end and you're going to pull up those two loops again i have a video that tells you how to do this in more detail and here what you're doing is you're going to chain two actually and then in that magic ring there what you're going to do is you're going to do eight double crochets now alternatively if you don't know how to do a magic ring or you know you don't want to watch my video and of course I'll have that linked but if you don't know how to do that you can always chain three and then you can do th um, eight double crochets in that um, first chain so the first one that you made so here I'm just continuing to do my eight double crochets into my magic ring and when I get to the end what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten the ring and since I've done or I did it with two strands I'm going to tighten pull that tail and tighten one then I'm going to tighten that inner one as tight as I can get it and then I'm tightening the tail again and here I'm connecting um, to the first stitch I made so I'm counting here my eight double crochets and then I'm connecting to that very first stitch I made I'm just doing a slip stitch there to connect it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to change to my blue color so I did the red on top because I'm going to have a red puff and I wanted it to match underneath so here what I'm doing to change the color is I'm just getting my blue and I'm pulling it through both of those stitches so now I'm going to chain two and you can tie it off and that's what I'm going to do because I want it to hold tight so I'm going to turn it over and I'm just going to tie off that red and blue there so it holds it tight and then from there I'm going to make two double crochets in each stitch so I started off in that very first stitch usually you can start off in the next stitch but I started off in the very first stitch so what that means is I'm going to have one stitch left at the end and I'm just going to um, ignore that act like it's not there and I'm going to just slip stitch into that first one that I made but here I'm just doing two double crochets in each of those stitches and at the end I will have a total of 16 double crochets for this round and here I'm just counting making sure that I've got what I need and I'm speeding it up a little bit because I don't want you guys to be super bored although you'll fast forward it where you feel like it so I'm not too worried about it but here just continuing to do the two double crochets per stitch until I get to 16. 
So here I'm at 16 and I started in that very first one instead of starting into the next one. So I'm just slip stitching there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two. And now I'm going to make two double crochets in that first double crochet that I already made. So I'm going to make two double crochets in that first one. So one, two, and now I'm going to make one double crochet in that next stitch. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. So two double crochets in the next stitch. And then one double crochet in the stitch after this and just keep on doing the same thing going all the way around so i have two double crochets then one then two double crochets then one and now i'm going to just keep on doing that where i do two double crochets in one stitch and then one double crochet in the next stitch i'm going to repeat that all the way to the end and in this round or row i guess i'm going to have um, 24 stitches so total of 24 double crochets in this round and I just repeat that same exact thing all the way to the end of this one and then when I get to the end here all I'm going to do is the same thing that I did before so I'm going to slip stitch into that very first stitch that I started with now I'm going to chain two again and I'm going to do two double crochets in that first stitch so I'm just going to that first stitch there do two double crochets so there's one two and then the next two stitches I'm going to do one double crochet each so one double crochet in that stitch and then one double crochet in the next stitch and I'm going to repeat that so two double crochets in one that stitch and then I'm going to do one double crochet in the next two stitches and just repeat that all the way around and this round will have 32 total stitches and again I'm doing two double crochets in one stitch and then after that I'm doing one double crochet in each of the next two stitches and just repeating that all the way around and it might get curved a little bit but that's okay since we're making a beanie I wasn't planning on making this flat so it's okay if it gets curved just a little bit there and I'm just going around and around until I get to the end and then of course when I get to the end I'm just going to repeat what I've been doing so I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch at the end and then I'm going to chain two after that so I'm just repeating the exact same thing that I've been doing so now I got it laid flat and I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch made I'm going to chain two again and now I'm going to do two double crochets in that first stitch and then I'm going to do one double crochet in the next three stitches so again so you can see it laid flat there this is how it looks and now on this round you're going to do this is round five by the way so on this round you're going to do two double crochets in that first stitch from your hook and then you're going to do one double crochet in each of the next three stitches there's one stitch two and then three now you're going to do two double crochets in that next stitch so the next stitch you come to will have two double crochets so there's one double crochet and then two double crochets and then you're going to do one double crochet in each of the next three stitches so that's one two and then three 
And what you're going to do is you're going to repeat that sequence all the way down. So you just repeat doing two double crochets in one stitch and then one double crochet in the next three stitches. And this will make you have a total of 40 double crochets when you get to the end. And again, just keep on repeating that around and around. And we're going to, again, do the same thing that we did before. We're going to slip stitch when we get all the way around to that first stitch that we made. And then we're going to chain two and we're going to keep on going. Now, I do like to measure mine every once in a while just to make sure that I'm on track. So that's probably a good thing to do. And you might end up having more stitches or less or less rounds, I mean, than me, because um, you might need your hat smaller or larger than I do. Now, just slip stitching to that first one we made. I'm laying it nice and flat now. And here I'm going to grab my measuring tape. So I'm going to just measure it just to see how much longer I need to go. So I'm at about uh, maybe about four and a half inches. And I need it to be six and a half inches for that medium size. So I've got several more or, or a couple more really. So here I chain two. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two double crochets in that first stitch. And then I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. There's one, two, three, and four. And now I'm going to repeat that sequence all the way to the end. So two double crochets in the, that next stitch. So one, two, and then I'm going to do one double crochet in each of the next four stitches. And then just repeat that all the way around till I get to where I started at again. And of course, once I get there, I'm going to slip stitch in the first stitch I made and I'm going to chain two. And again, you could make this child size if you wanted to, so then you wouldn't need near as many. This would be really cute for Halloween for maybe a newborn kind of beanie outfit. That would be super, super cute. Of course, I plan on wearing this around town, so I think it's super cute for an adult too. And you just keep on going with that. And at the end of this, I'm going to have 48 double crochets in this round. And I just keep on going around repeating that pattern. And if you notice, if you need your hat bigger or your beanie bigger, then I make it then you increasing that how many double crochets you're doing in the middle. So how many of that one double crochet is in between the two. You're just increasing that by one. So the next time we do this, it'll be five. And then the one after that, it'll be six. So here I just slip stitch to that first double crochet. And now I'm going to change it up just a little bit because I want my um, round or my rows here. I want it to still look like a circle. So I want it to be even. So I did a chain two. Now I'm going to do one double crochet in the first five. So one. And then the next one, I'm going to do one double crochet in. So that's two, that's three, four, and then that one's five. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two double crochets in this next stitch. So I've got one, two. And then I'm going to repeat that pattern. So now I'm going to do five double or one double crochet in the next five stitches. So that's two there, three, four, and five. 
And now I'm going to do two double crochets in that next stitch there. So one, two. And that's the pattern I'm going to repeat here all the way um, till I get to the end of this round or to where I started at, I should say. And I'm just going to keep on going with that pattern. And um, it's pretty easy if you lose count to see where you started at because that is... Um, so you can just go back to where you did your two double crochets at. So that's pretty easy. And as you can see there um, from the factory, it looks like this yarn has been tied. So I just tuck that behind because you're not going to see it at all. So just tuck that behind and just keep on working. And again, when I get all the way around here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch made so the top of that first stitch made and then I'm going to chain two and I'm just going to keep on going on and this round will have a total of 56 double crochets so that's the, going to be a total of 56 double crochets for this round here and again I'm just going to keep on doing my pattern until I get to the very end of this round and also if you didn't need it this big you can of course fast forward to the part that you want that you need it to be at so here I'm just slip stitching into that first one I'm laying it flat and now I'm going to see again how many more do I actually need so here let's see how big this one is so I'm going to put it right in the middle and this is right at six inches so I think I'm going to do one more round here of double crochets and so now I'm going to chain two and now I'm going to go back to my other pattern so I'm going to do two double crochets in that first chain from my hook and then I'm going to do one double crochet in the next six stitches and this is going to be my last round but if you wanted yours to be bigger the next round you would do would be two double crochets in that first and then one double crochet in the next seven and so you would keep on increasing by that um that one double crochet so the one after that would be eight if you had to make it larger than this and then you're just repeating that all the way down so repeating the same exact thing all the way down to the start and then we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we made after this and um, then we're going to, instead of increasing, we're just going to work even stitches into this. So after this, we're just going to be working even stitches and we're not going to make any increases at all. And um, if you see here, so we started out with eight double crochets in our magic ring. So each round that we do, we're increasing by eight stitches just just an FYI and here again in this one you're going to have 64 total double crochets in this round so there's going to be 64 double crochets in this round and it's starting to round a little bit and again since that's what I want it to do I'm not going to be worried about it if I wanted it to stay a flat circle then I would have to um, add another stitch But I'm not going to be worried about that for a beanie. And we're almost all the way to the end here. And now I'm just slip stitching in that first stitch that I made on that round. And now I'm going to get my measuring tape back out and I'm going to see, make sure that it's at least that six and a half. So 
let's see here. It is really, it's about six and three quarters. So that's definitely, that's big enough. I'm going to be happy with the six and three quarters size. So now what I'm going to do for the rest of making this beanie. So I'm going to just do even rows all the way down. So I'm going to chain two and then I'm going to do my double crochets all the way around just one double crochet in each of the stitches so and that's what I'm going to be repeating all the way around and I'm going to repeat that for every single row here so just one double crochet in each of those stitches all the way around and I'm going to repeat that until it is the height that I need it to be at so for this one, the height that it needs to be is the total height is about seven and a half inches, but I'm going to switch up what I'm doing here and I'm going to actually make this part of it be about five and a half inches and then I'm going to change the way I'm crocheting this and I'm going to make that, um, that rest part rest of it make up for about those two inches that I need and here again I'm just sped it up because it's kind of boring watching somebody just go around and around in a circle and I am choosing to do the instead of just doing it in rounds at this point I am choosing to do my slip stitch at the end of each row since I want to um, change up how I'm crocheting at the end so that's how I'm choosing to do it. Now, if you don't like the way the end looks and you wanted to um, do it a different way, then you are um, welcome just to keep on doing this all the way to the end. But I like, um, I like it going in the other direction too. I think that makes it look really nice. And if you're new to my channel and you've made it this far, please subscribe to my channel i've got lots of fun videos for you to watch loads of beginner video videos for you to watch and of course all kinds of really fun projects so this is a project series right here that i'm doing so this is the first one the sally nightshade from nightmare before christmas that was my inspiration the next one that i'm doing will be jack skellington and then the one after that will be a a beanie that was inspired by oogie boogie so this is my little halloween series that i'm doing and i'm really loving all of these and it's tons of fun and if you like this video please push the like button again please subscribe to my channel and if you want to get notified when I have new videos coming out, ring the bell so you can get all my notifications. And of course, again, I'm just continuing going around and around in a circle until I get to the height that I need here. And it seems like this is probably the longest part is just going around and around in that circle. And everyone, please feel free to fast forward where you would like to or to pause where you need to. I sped it up hoping it wouldn't be totally boring, but um, definitely feel free to fast forward where you want to here. Now I decided to skip ahead in the video and make a couple of rounds just on my own there. But um, again, pause it where you think you need to pause it at or fast forward it where you want to fast forward it at. So now I'm just going to get out my measuring tape and I'm going to measure and I'm not quite to where I need to be. So I think I need to do one more round. So I'm going to go ahead and do one more round here. And um, after I do that, then I'm going to show you how we can start doing the other rounds. Also, another thing that you could do here is if you wanted the bottom part of your beanie to maybe be just a little bit tighter than the top part, you could do a double crochet decrease. I wouldn't do very many, maybe just 
um, two total and then I would do one maybe at the front and then one at the back that way um, that way it's kind of staggered and it's not all together so it would look more natural that way or you could do one on each side and um, that would just bring it in a little bit and make it go um, kind of more straight down which is what we're looking for on the next row that we do so on the next area And again, I'm just repeating all the way down. Just doing the uh, double crochets in each, one double crochet in each stitch there, all the way around. And then when we get to the end of this one, we're going to change it up. All right, now I'm going to measure one more time just to make sure I have the height that I need. So, yeah, I'm, I've got about a little around five and a half, a little over five and a half there. So I'm happy with that. So now, obviously, I want at the end it to be seven and a half. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain. And I'm going to chain right about nine stitches total but what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain and then I'm going to take a measurement of it to get the exact number of stitches that I need so here let me just get the measuring tape out so I'm, I need about seven and a half and that gives me right about seven and a half and remember you need one extra because we're going to be working in the second chain from our hook so we're going to be half double crocheting down this chain but we're going to not work in that first we're going to work in that second chain from our hook and we're going to half double crochet into that chain and then we're going to half double crochet into each chain all the way down and so that for me will be a total of eight half double crochets now if yours um, was different then you're going to your total will be a little bit different but since i made nine total chain stitches and then i'm half double crocheting in that second chain from my hook then that's going to make me or leave me with eight half double crochets down that chain so I have that last one to work into and now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch in that next stitch so that's the next stitch I'm just going to slip stitch in that next one and then I'm going to do that one more time slip stitch in the next stitch so I did two slip stitches and now I'm not going to chain I'm just going to turn my work and now I'm going to half double crochet in that front loop there so i'm going to half double crochet in that loop that is front for me so if i were to turn my work around what the front of it so right there you see that front loop so i'm just going only into that front loop and i'm going to half double crochet again all the way down and there will be a total of eight again a total of eight half double crochets so i'm going to go all the way down that and I'm just going to continue doing that and definitely count this because sometimes you can get a little off and you really don't want to get off on this um, on your count because you're going to connect it when you get to all the way around your hat you're going to connect these in so if you're off then it's just going to look funny so now you I chained one and now I turned and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work into that just that front stitch again so that front loop I'm going to work into that front loop there and I'm going to half double crochet all the way down and I'm going to repeat exactly what I did before so I'm going to do eight half double crochets all the way down and then when I get to the end I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches so I'm going to slip stitch into those next two stitches when I get all the way down. And right there I kind of messed up a little bit. I think I grabbed both loops instead of just that front loop. So you want to make sure that you're just grabbing that front loop because it makes it have like that nice little ribbed look, which is super cute. And so here I am all the way down. So now I'm going to take that next 
stitch, I'm going to slip stitch into one, and I'm going to sti slip stitch into the next one too. So I'm going to do two slip stitches. I'm going to turn my work, do not chain, and now I'm going to just make half double crochets all the way down into that front loop. So just that loop that's facing me, so the loop that's closest to me on the chain that I just made or on those half double crochets that I just made. And then I'm going to do that all the way down. And when I get to the end again, I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn it. And then I'm going to half double crochet all the way down again into that front loop. And sometimes that end loop I do find a little bit hard to work into. And if you have a little bit of a hard time working into it, um, you can grab it with your hook end and that makes it just a little bit easier to work into there. And um, here again, I'm just half double crocheting all the way down. Again, I have eight total. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. I'm going to turn and then I'm going to half double crochet all the way up. And if it looks off, so if it looks like for instance that those stitches are a little bit larger than what you've been doing then you could adjust it a little bit and you could do three slip stitches but that's just if it's starting to look a little off if it's looking fine when you get to that end then um, just keep on going with what you're doing and here I like to count it sometimes just to make sure that I'm doing exactly what I would need to be doing. So here I'm just half double crocheting in that front loop and now I'm chaining one and I'm going to half double crochet all the way down in that front loop again. And I have a hard time sometimes on that when after I turn working into that first chain there or that first loop. So if you do that's okay. Now slip stitching into the next two, turning, and then again, I'm just going to work into that front loop and I'm going to half double crochet all the way down. And then I'm chaining one and then I'm half double crocheting all the way down yet again. And I'm still counting each time. So again, I like to count each time just to make sure that I've got the exact number of stitches that I need. Because it will look kind of wonky when you get to the end if you don't have the exact number of stitches that you need. And then I'm continuing in this pattern. I'm just continuing this all the way around. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit um, that way until I'm at the end. But if you need to pause it at any time, please, please pause it. So here I skipped ahead and I am almost to the very end. Now, um, when I get to the end, I'm going to look and see exactly how many stitches that I have left. So... Now I've got, it looks like I've got a couple of stitches left there. So I'm going to go up and down this one more time. And um, just because I had about two stitches left. Of course, I'm going to chain one, but you see how I have one stitch left in the middle there. So I'm going to go down one more time and then slip stitch into that stitch that I have left but if I did not have a stitch left what I would do is I would slip stitch all the way down from here and I would put the two ends together I'm going to show you kind of what I mean in a minute or if you didn't want to slip stitch all the way down that you could also um, cut your yarn long and get your yarn needle and sew it up that way but since I have one more left I'm going to just go ahead and finish going all the way down on this last one and then I'm going to slip stitch into that last stitch that I have on the beanie so on the original beanie itself and then after that we're going to sew these 
two ends together and I'm going to do that with my hook um, by making slip stitches all the way up so here I'm going to slip stitch into that very last stitch right there so that very last stitch that I have I'm going to slip stitch into it and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch all the way up but again of course if you don't want to do that you could also cut your yarn and use your yarn needle and so I'm going to go into the back bump now so that very back bump I'm going to go into the first one on my right and then I'm going to go into my left so the first back bump on my right here and then the first back bump on my left and then I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to pull that stitch through. So same thing. I'm just going to the right and then left. I'm yarning over and then pulling through everything on my hook. So I'm just slip stitching there. And I will have a total of eight slip stitches because I had eight half double crochets all the way up. And this is where it will look wonky if you get your stitch count off is um it won't even it won't match up evenly so this is where it's going to kind of look weird if you get your stitch count off so here i'm just continuing i'm almost at that very last one there so there's my last one i'm going the back loop and then of the left back loop of the right and i'm pulling um pulling my yarn through and there i've sewed them up and it looks great it looks almost seamless it looks like the other so that's why i like that because you can't tell as much and so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut my yarn and um, i usually try to cut mine a little long so i'm cutting my yarn and now i'm going to switch to my red so here i've got the red i'm just going to pull my red through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my TikTok hack that I like. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll link that video. So I'm going to put my knee or my yarn hook in um, that next stitch. And I'm going to make a twist and I'm going to pull through. So I'm going to put my hook through the next stitch. So the next end really. And I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm going to twist and then I'm going to pull through. I'm going to do that all the way to the end. Now when you do that, when you pull up that loop, make sure you pull it up to about double crochet height because if you do not pull it up to double crochet height, it'll be incredibly hard to pull your yarn through. So here again, I'm just pulling up, I'm twisting, and then I'm pulling my yarn through. So again i'm doing that same thing over and over again now alternatively if you don't like this stitch i like it because it kind of looks i don't know kind of looks hairy kind of looks like a little messy like sally is but if you don't like that stitch or don't want to do that stitch you could just do a single crochet all the way around or you could do a slip stitch all the way around or even let's say you like it like it is you don't have to do anything this could that could be your end of that section so you don't necessarily have to do anything there if you don't want to so you, you could just leave it like it is but i really like the red i like how it um i like how it looks i like that it looks a little wavy doing it this way it's my new favorite stitch to uh to try it's Again, I think it's super fun, but you do really have to make sure you pull up to that double stitch height or it's incredibly hard to pull through. And there's a couple of times here that I'm like, oh man, I didn't pull it up enough. But I'm kind of stubborn and just uh, pulled my yarn through anyway instead of trying it again. So again, I'm just doing this all the way around. And then when I do get all the way around, I'm going to slip stitch to the first um first stitch that I made here so I'm going to slip stitch to that first one and then I'm going to tie it all off so just continuing this all the way around and here I'm at the first stitch that I made almost at the first stitch that I made anyway so I've got just a couple more to do and now uh, that one I made too tight see so here I'm just gonna pull it up twist it 
pull my yarn through and now I'm at that first one that I made it could be a little bit hard to see but I'm just gonna slip stitch right here to that first one and then I'm going to cut my yarn so I'm gonna cut my red yarn and I'm just gonna pull it through there and now I'm going to um, put my hook and I'm gonna pull that piece of yarn to the back I didn't realize you couldn't see that so now what I'm I'm going to tie these off now but you see how it looks right now without the um, without all the other work done so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just tying this off I'm not gonna work these ends in some people um, some die hard crochets say oh no no you cannot ever just tie it off you have to work the ends in but I'm confident that this is going to be great and um, it's going to look great when I'm done so I'm just tying these ends in tying these ends off and now I'm just going to cut them and um, then I'm going to continue on so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of the black lines that look like stitches all around and this how many you want to do is really up to you so now it's time for me to grab my yarn needle so and my black yarn so I'm just going to get my yarn needle and my black yarn I'm going to cut a long piece off you know, I don't really have any scientific formula here to tell you what how long this piece is going to need to be. And you may have to do this a couple of times. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull, pull my yarn through my yarn needle. And I'm going to turn my beanie over. So I'm going to turn it to the inside. I'm going to attach my yarn to the very top there. And I'm going to, I didn't tie that off before. So I, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and tie that off now and cut it while I can. It'll make my life easier later. So I'm going to do the blue also. So I'm just going to tie that again. And then I'm going to cut all of that. So I clean up what the inside looks like. And I'm doing this one three times. So now I'm just going to cut all of those off. And then I'm just going to attach the yarn to the inside. So I'm not going to go over the red with this at all. I'm just going to go over the blue part. And it's just the blue part that um, is kind of the original beanie, not the back and forth half double crochet. So that part I'm going to leave um, just the way it is. I'm not going to do anything else with that. So here I'm just tying my yarn on into the back of a stitch on the back of my hood or the inside of my hood actually or inside of my beanie and now I'm just going to weave this through so now I'm just going to weave this through in and out um, again this is kind of to your taste and how much that you want to see um, so I'm just going to insert my hook wherever I think it would look nice at and then I'm going to Just pull it through and then I'm going to make a cross over that one so kind of like a cross or an X over that one and I'm going to pull it all the way through and then I'm going to continue to do that all the way around this hood and um, you may want less than me and if you do then you know just do as many as you like so just do as many as you want and just go back and forth like I am and um, just do it all the way around and again you don't have to uh, it doesn't have to be uniform at all that's one nice thing about making Sally is that um, you know it's kind of a little bit random it seems so you can go in and out one way you can do two you know you can do one long one with two kind of stitches there and you can just um, eye it is pretty much that's what I do and you don't have to go the same direction you can go one direction and then another direction so you can go all different directions here there's really no wrong way to do this it's just what you think looks nice to you and you know if I make this another time the next one will look completely different I won't be going in the same directions for each one I'll be doing it a little bit different so each one that you do is just a little different and um, again I'm just keep on going and I did not get enough off uh, or get enough black um, off of my um, ball of yarn so I'm gonna have to cut this off and uh, put more black on it and that's okay too 
so I'm just um, I'm just tying that off now I'm gonna get more black put it on my needle my yarn needle and I'm going to uh, tie that next one to the back side of my yarn so you can't see it on the front side and now I'm just going to continue doing what I was doing before so just making my my stitches here it looks like she's sewn together so I'm just going to do that all over this all right I like it I think that looks awesome so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tie it off kind of like I did before with the last one so I'm going in through the back stitches so kind of the back loops of those stitches because I don't want it to show from the front so just make sure you go through the back loops of the stitches there so and just pull it tight and do it a few times that way you know it's really going to hold and if you are worried about any of these holding these knots what you could do is put a little fabric glue on them and let them um, sit and dry and that way you could be 100 percent sure that they're not going to work their way out but i'm really confident that they're not going to work their way out so that's looking super cute but now we got to make that puff so here i'm going to get my little puff making tool honestly I don't have a clue what you call these pom-poms right I always call them a puff that's kind of funny but uh, you're gonna get this little tool here and if you don't have one of these tools so what you're gonna do is you're just going to wrap this yarn around and around and around and around about a million times is what it's gonna feel like wrap it around till you can't wrap it around anymore the more yarn you use the puffier your your uh, your pom-pom or your little puff at the top is going to be now um if you don't have one of these and don't want to buy one honestly this is the first time i've ever used one of these and um it wasn't really very hard i honestly thought it was going to be a little hard to do but it really wasn't very hard so i'm just wrapping it around but if you don't want to buy one of these and um you or you just don't want to learn how to use one of these you can always just um buy your pre-made little pom-poms at the store um now i did not do that right i will say that um you're really not supposed to do it that way but you live in uh you live and you learn now i've made a few of those little puffs so um <laughs> so i know the right way to do it you're supposed to cut your yarn in between and i didn't do that i just fed it through the middle it worked out for me though so that's that's one of the good things is it did end up working out for me so now i'm just putting the yarn around here this red yarn just over and over and over again until I want to get so much on there that I can really barely close it because I do like my uh, pom-pom there to be rather large so now I'm just going to cut off the yarn off the ball and I'm going to cut down the middle so there's that slit that was in the middle and you're just going to take your scissors here and you're going to cut down the middle and I don't know what happened to the color of my video there that's really how it, it's really weird how it did that maybe it's the light coming into the room I'm not real sure but um I found it very hard especially this is the first time I've ever done this to cut this and um it did come with little scissors like this but those just didn't work and so then I grabbed my orange handled scissors and they worked a little bit better but honestly not great so now what I found is that if you'll do it kind of layer by layer so you kind of do like the little top layer first and then you go down to like the middle and the bottom kind of layer since you, it was stacked up so much so if you do that it works quite a bit better so now i grabbed a different pair of scissors to see if um these scissors would work any better and they do a little bit better my blue handled scissors they work a little bit better maybe i just need to get a really sharp pair of scissors also that would probably be a great idea those orange handled scissors i think my mom gave them to me so they're probably 40 years old by now they may not be the sharpest in the world so now i'm just going down kind of that middle area of the of the puff and now that i've got down how to make one of these i'm going to do another video on actually how to make one so here i just um grabbed a piece of yarn and then i put it around the middle and all i did here is i'm tying that yarn around the very very middle and i um tying it in a knot and now i'm prying those apart 
So now I've got my, my little puff there, my little pom-pom. So now I'm going to trim around to make sure that it looks nice and even here. And I'm making a huge mess on my white background. Maybe that's my uh, issue with this. Maybe I changed my white backgrounds. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. The next video, we'll uh, try it with a different white background and see if it um, does this with the color because I'm not really liking how it's doing the color here. And I didn't notice that while I was recording, unfortunately. So now I'm attaching it. So all I'm doing is I'm taking those two long, um, two long pieces that I tied around it and I'm putting it through the middle of the beanie and I'm just going to tie them. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to tie them um, tight, but not so tight that it messes up the shape of the beanie. So I'm going to do that just a few times. And again, if you want to glue this, please feel free to glue it. Um, just if you're worried that it's going to hold or not. And then I'm going to cut my yarn here from the middle. So I'm going to cut it there. And then I am done with this beanie, guys. So what do you think? I love how our Sally Nightshade beanie came out. I hope you loved making this project. Um, if you did, please subscribe to my channel. Push the like button. And... Um, Happy hooking, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.